Hey there everybody, I want to tell the kinds of people that really love good worship and have false authority teaching in that. I don't mean to hurt anybody, I'm not trying to accuse anybody or put anyone down, but I am not a part of that wealth, Western European, really witchcraft, occult, always seer spying and never confronting a stranger and accusing bearing false witness. I've been around it as well, but it is a nightmare. And I'm going to, I have always been in a ministry sent from God from early on. I never encountered this dark doctrine in black churches, never. Vietnamese, all kinds, Baptist. I'm not part of your movement and I'm not under you. It is a really warped like a perception, misperception, they're over everybody. They're over, it's an ego thing and false teaching from the way back hills of country law when mama was some kind of witch or Jezebel or, you know, abusive and they made this big Eli Temple Life formula or whatever, Demas. But it has to do with witchcraft because it's not easily entreated. It's not respectful. It uses some kind of psychic, elite, superior skill in the group, in the clan, in the cult, the coven, whatever they call themselves. Supposedly Christian minister. And I was sent to these mega, mega micro. So I am sent to the body, but not in that movement or underneath that movement. The men and women are so skilled, so dogmatic, so ornery, and so totalitarian in this false doctrine. So I've researched it since the 90s when I first found it, or really it found me, because <laughs> I was unsuspecting. So let me go back and proclaim and state our office. I'm all fivefold ministry offices, but it's not entitled. It's not we-centric colonial red state. It is about the body of Christ, which to me is very multicultural, much more than this kind of group. I don't know if they used to own slaves or what, but it is that big because it will not talk to you. It will not respect, be up front. It will calculate, like witchcraft. It will calculate and scan you and have their officiates scan, deep scan, but then they'll form their own opinion using, in my opinion, psychic spectral evidence, such as the Massachusetts witch trials presented in those days of the whelp. Western European Levitical patriarchs right off the boat of the Puritans in the patriarchal Massachusetts first colonial days. And yet I know my history and I'm respectful enough to the founding fathers, to any type of people group, black, white, or anything, anybody. I am respectful to know that not all people in the same culture that look like that have the same sort of identity in that. They're all, not all the same. They're not all whelp. Just like the New England patriarchs, the Puritans were not all biased misogynist with false teaching, dark doctrine, or seer prophetic gifts perverted to accuse because spectral evidence is a invisible but a calculating accusing using false teaching, but you can feel the energy if you're a real prophet, which I am. It's a seer gifting, immature or perverse that's gotten dark, egocentric, turf protecting, which is anti-community, and it makes biases and systems which are Demas, hopefully not Eli. So I have great empathy for them if they were broken, bruised, man, you know, woman haters before I met them. But listen, this is a giant, giant many movements. I can give, I can give you the tracing back, not just from New England, but to New Wine Magazine Overseer Shepherding, which I studied, and that is from the 70s or before, patriarchal, white only, over and no black people barely, and no women leaders. I don't care about women. I, I don't care about having my way as a person, uh, as a female. It's the office, God's work today, and it's not patriarchal, it's represented prototype, because God has said, it's his body, not mine. And I believe that when I got confirmation from my own freedom in Christ, and the Baptist, but the Bible, Rod Parsley, the pastor, and his comments about Deborah 
because I don't really care about doing this. I'm going to do it whatever he wants me to do personally for his kingdom, really his kingdom, for you all. And it's to stir it up. Stir up the mixture, the Ishmael amongst the Isaacs. The ego and the Demises for the new equal opportunity, real respect, humility move. And I'm working on my humility all the time. You know, James 3.17, fruit of relationships, fear of the Lord. No totalitarianism anymore. That comes from ego and false teaching. So when I'm looking at confronting, I've had to grow up like this to be this strong because it is a real Jezebel doctrine. And my Bible and my good parenting were not like that, not country law, tongue talkers, prophetic at all, who were not charismatic, but were white, but not colonial slave owners or misogynists. I go back to that all the time. And there's so many people that are not like that, that are pure hearted. But right now I can't go around them because I'm very sensitive after Dallas. After the disrespect, I can, as a you know, people with, have been through racism, abuse, falsely accused in ministry or in business. You will have, as many African Americans I know will say, certain kinds of people in the field, the international maybe, the person who has an atypical look, too tall, too short, too wide, too thin, whatever. After a while, you just get filled up with all the district. You know, you can perceive it and you avoid it. In this case, it's legalism old law, old timey, ancient spirit of dogma that's clouding our prophetic in too many areas, not all. And I've just had to grow up to be this bold because I went to my Bible. I studied the Jezebel. I studied Adam and Eve, chain of command, Ephesians 521 in marriage and in real life in ministry, mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. And I found that's missing in these kinds of groups. I studied Ephesians 4. I studied the community, the fruit in my own life, the walking in meekness and loneliness and knowledge of common doctrine without legalism, character assassination based on your own false teaching undermining God's ministers, leaders, lay, the saints. And that's why I'm speaking out because my Bible teaches me as the head of this lampstand, Christian ministry for the folk in the fear of the Lord, a future church or any, you know, all the churches, that I am not to tolerate a dominating, fierce and self-protecting witchcraft of false teaching in ministry in this legalism I'm to confront it and I have confronted it I will be confronted but every once in a while as a Elijah prophet who can if God wants me to I don't look for it but if he drops it in there I will know what people that people are talking I'll know I'm prayed against it's part of the turf of a seer a walking seer as many are it isn't a big deal to me but I can see it's warfare against whoever this is in the Lord and it's anti-productive for his kingdom it's like similar to the spirit of Jezebel and weak wuss Ahab who wouldn't confront trying to always undermine throw confusion throw accusation Dutch you know play games mind games false teaching mind games even occult psychic and real witchcraft to stop the flow of the revival, Elijah, move. That's why I'm for these same kind. And I can name them, but I'm not. Because I'm out in the field and I'm out studying the body for all my life since 24. To know how to build bridges and really, I guess, instruct by this time. I can tell it's the same kind of basic stuck on themselves. In my case, with me personally as their typecast, I stir it up, you know, for the sake of learning about it. I, it is the white, white charismatic prophetic, and it is not all white charismatic, but you can say they're different varieties. Some from Florida, the worst tribes I've ever, the most steely and totalitarian come from the panhandle and the immature of Florida. And it goes around the world. There's whelp in every nation that believe the same doctrines, you know. I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at you. And I'm not even talking to the head founder, him or her. 
I don't think the founder does this because I've studied the founder of some of the, a lot of these movements. Now, when I heard of shepherding, East Coast shepherding, it was in the Jesus people days. I was a Jesus people, still am basically part traditional. I'm not really deeply traditional, but I, I was raised around it more and I understand the decency of it, not contrived, fear-based, dark teaching, thank God in the culture. I mean, there surely could be. And I've been around enough African Americans to know they smile when they see me, most of them. They light up there. They perceive me. They have a huge might and power in their ministers generally. And then the tongue talkers, they've been through so much warfare on their own life from their culture and in real life. Hey, they're not afraid of women. They're not afraid of strong. They're, they respect the moms because there's been, you know, lately in the last many decades have been single moms. So I have real reasons for multicultural, but I also have real reasons to not be moved and blocked by false prophets who have false teaching. And I will not say you're a false prophet to accuse you. I'll say it because you're bordering on it if you're blocking God's move. I mean, if you've got so much... I even talked about, because I deal with the Holy Spirit realm, usually I'm a calm person, I hang with Catholics and Baptists, I'm Mary, I like that, I'm, that's me. But when I have to get out for the sake of the Lord and moves of God and multiculturalism, be it Baptist or tongue talker, I'm for the body. That no one's a prisoner of false teaching in a house and that there's freedom because of the law, freedom to be different yourself, freedom to not be controlled by, you've got to be under patriarchal white, you know, overdrive authority. You should not have to go to find Holy Spirit, move in the gifts, and be greeted by this satanic frown of suspicious cult watchers, elite steeped in their movement, skilled and ready to defend their their ministry turf. And because of that, I am so out of there. I don't need to have a cult reading me and scanning me, never talking to me, finding out if it's true. I've paid my dues for the sake of this. Ultimately, through 30 years of study since I got in the prophetic, the white prophetic and all colors, but they didn't bother me. So when I was in Florida, DFW really made me, whoa, I didn't know how big it is. Mega, followers of Mega and Micro, but mostly Mega in Dallas. Then I came up here trying to find love, basic human love and respect, trying to test drive a big church, well known. I think, man, they don't look like they, they used to be a lot more in that spirit of, you know, false discerning of witchcraft and, you know, all that Jezebel. And I thought, man, it looks like they're nicer now. They've gotten grown up. The head guy doesn't seem to be, I don't see the whelp spirit. So I visited, then I also realized it's a cult. Why? Not because I don't respect, it's the fruit. You're scanned. You go up to say hello, basically to the, say, hi, I'm, you know, how are you? I'm a fellow minister. I just don't look like your vibe, but I'm a new person. And they go, the old whelp accuser of the cistern, way back in time. I guess they think I'm coming to take over because I don't, you know, they, and see, this is it today. Bottom line. If I walk, what happened with Florida, Dallas, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, not all, believe me, not, I haven't been everywhere. Not word of faith, even though some of them do have that when they fellowship with this and bring that out in them. Pharisee yeast spreads. So what I believed is that it's a counterfeit move to control and keep under their form of old back under the law controlling system of government, which is male only, basically trying to probably be diverse, but they're not. And they really aren't community 
in the Bible submitted to God's whole counsel, they never confront. That's a relationship respect factor that's missing. Matthew 18, 15, Galatians, humble Galatians 6, 1, I do that. I'm here to be, they don't resemble. My kind resembles and the people I want to deal with and the ones that are out humble servants of, you know, around different kinds of Christians and colors, they resemble the wisdom of God more. The wisdom that comes from above, if you want to model real leadership, mature, fair leadership, it's going to role model James 3.17, the wisdom that comes from above, not the dark side, not the Antichrist, not the anti-fruit, Hebrews 10.25. It is pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, no bias, and without hypocrisy listen if I were a hypocrite if I were to say if I'm not a hip if I were a hypocrite I'd backbite I wouldn't tell you I wouldn't be Proverbs 27 6 loving enough to confront faithful are the wounds of a friend deceitful are the kisses of an enemy and a lot of this is the kisses false Phariseeism and then no you know, it's because on the way of all these decades, God gave me a principle, three, two principles. Don't take it personally if you see something bad. Misogyny, rude, ego. Check your heart. But then I want you to know you're seeing it prophetically because you're seeing what I see. The other part was if you bump into anything that's bad in a church fellowship or ministry or Christian setting, that hurts people, that hurts the Lord, like racism, bias, misogyny, you know, whatever, con artists, whatever, seers gone awry, psychic reading evil eye and leadership. If you see it three times or more, that's your sign that I'm getting you, I see a lot more of it, so therefore you need to teach on it, and that's what I've done, so that's all I do. All right, so today I go out there and I'm reminded I noticed for some reason when I'm around a controlling ministry that has a big flow like the Pharisee overseer wealth variety that is in the prophetic movement that owns the turf they seem to think they presume they own all of us they're over everybody if we walk in you know and I'm not I'm my own person in the Lord and ministry, Galatians 1 5. I'll talk to you. I'll respect you if I'm, you know, I want to be respected as a person, everyday person, not famous celebrity. Not because I'm white or black. It's just because I want to be real and know the Lord. I want to have an Isaiah 56 verse 7 type of fellowship in ministry. That's the new day. The old day is the new. That means a house of prayer for all people. Equal opportunity, respectful, humble, and loving. That's all I go for. When I attend any fellowship, which I do go, and I do love to be with the saints, Christian ministry, church, whatever, mega or micro, I sort of dull, you know, I sort of park my mantle. I park this at the door because now I am on their authority. I respect all boundaries because I love them and respect them not to mess with their stuff they've got going. And I walk in habitually and I regard boundaries and sit there quiet in, in these churches where they move in the spirit. I'm really now super hyper sensitive and alert. Are they well? Am I going to get witch watched? Am I going to get withstood? Am I going to get somebody come over and check me out? Am I going to, are they equally respectful if I walk up or are they biased because they really can't understand anybody but their own pet preferred style so all these have been big training helps for the move of God the harvest you can do your thing you can do whatever God says at your choice with Ephesians 4 common doctrine but please do not libel slander bad mouth evil eye spread gossip if you've never talked to anybody never loved him enough to lower yourself presumably to chat with somebody who is not just like your style for the body of Christ in 2020 because I'd already been in ministry all my life and around the area in my own ministry from the mid 80s really before that 
I got a word of the Lord for now, 2020, and the because I was seeing this well patriarchal, matriarchal, goofy stuff and false teaching, and it was coming after me by rumors and gossip and no, and I had a board, but they didn't believe, they didn't want to know. It was like, this is what it is. The pearl is, by my look, by my outfit, by my size, by my energy, by my wear and tear if I'm tired, they sit afar, presume by reading me, not by dialogue, never. They presume and assume by false scowling doctrine of patriarchal matriarch or shepherding, witch watching, that I am to be watched as one that is not submitted or accountable to their kind of authority. Totalitarian foolishness. And therefore I researched it because I read them. They read me and I read them back. They scan me and I know they're scanning, so I'll just think, yeah, oh man, I'm going to watch them and see what they do. See what their doctrines are. What's, what is this doctrine in the bathwaters of their ministry? And I came back after I felt like I was being psychic red typecast, racially profiled in the 90s. After three times or more, I found whelp. Western European, usually red state, colonial. I guess they feel deserving to be over all of us. I'm not a colonial. I've been raised around it. I am global. I, tr I am an energy of many cultures, a lot of African. I get it. So I'm here for them, not just me. It's not just about me and witch watch. It's about a lot of anti-racism bias in the churches. So if I teach and am standing up, faithful are the wounds of a friend, because I am a truly friend, I want them to avoid God's wrath. I don't want there to be an Ichabod in our nation, which is, I've felt that for how many years? About 12 years. All right. So when I was in 2020 and I was seeing this false teaching surface in my former area and affect many people and start to watch everybody govern, you know, that, even though I had my own board that was not like that, men and women, black and white, they're not all like this. But this one, I guess I'm, an, you know, very symbolic of something to teach. It's too much to avoid not instructing. So when I go in, I'm their litmus test in the good old boy patriarchs. I'm the good old boy, good old girl trigger, and I'm not good old girl. I'm trying not to be like that. So because that is a false culture within the Christian culture, a clubby, divisive, self-guarding, and also exclusive elite trying to be grand club, be they country or now country club, they're all levels. I just am not tolerating that foolish Jezebel spirit. So if I walk in and I trigger the all-knowing scowl of the false teaching witch watchers, I will know it and I'll just watch them. I'll say, you know what, it is a club. I didn't realize it. I was hoping they were different now. And because God is not tolerating foolishness in 2020, the word was when God's last move comes. This might be the last move. It may not, but it might be. He said, when my move really is important and unity in the Christian community is so important for the diverse love, body of Christ, Ephesians 4, unity, Psalm 133, where God's God commands his blessing, life upon us forevermore. He said, when that day comes, I will not settle for second or third or fourth hand you know, servanthood in the body, Christian ministry. I noted that, but it wasn't the time to release this. God said in that day, in 2020, he said, when that day comes, it's going to be like community, like communion, the Lord's Supper, when some will die young and they will be sick they won't know why because they fail to discern the body of christ correctly that means they will be over there scanning perhaps listening to rumors starting rumors based on vibe be jealous be accusing backbiting in the christian ministry the fellowships but god's not mocked they are only bringing damnation on themselves you know why? Because if this nation keeps on going in the church, the true church is not really true. It's into this. It's ornery. 
false, it's proud, it's elite, skilled, but condemns no love, then our nation's doomed. That's all I can say. And I saw that starting a few years ago with the ego Elihe priesthood in Dallas, DFW area. Not all of them are like that. Not all of them are witch watching. But it was really in the area. Shepherding. If I were to tell you two main groups that they produce people with the well, false teaching and the scowl and the aloof and the call, you know, feeling entitled to call everybody, you know, they're out of order without speaking. They're, you know, spread rumors to the network in the deep south, Florida, Panhandle, uh, Missouri, uh, up and down East Coast, Richmond, Dallas, North Carolina, South Carolina, wherever they have their whelp networks around the world and nation in pockets, you know, Miss Darcy, we heard she's a practicing, you know, what charismatic weird W or a queen. We heard she's not under authority. That's patriarchal, old-timey, white, slave owner, colonial. That's who it is. We-centric. We are the world-centric, and I am not in that mixture, unholy mixture. It's unrighteous. So where I go, I don't care about your color. I care about being sent. I care about the flavor of the pr product. That means the relationship, respect, equal and that they have to be diverse and understand my energy is not there to be a threat to them because they're in false teaching if they think that but they're not they're they're liberated from that prison house of old timey steel false religion cult religion in their mixture of clanning clunt excuse me cloning cults cliques elite there is also now as I left Dallas, I said, Lord, is there anything you want me to say? Because I knew this kind of exists everywhere. It didn't just Dallas. Lord said, before you leave, I'm going to tell you there are at least two or three cults that say they're Christian, Christian practicing ministries. And I could pick them right now and name them, but I will not. So then I went up here and I thought, let me say this. Is it supposed to be big eye in television famous ministry or not? I deal with people of mega to micro. If you have a group that is now so great and famous, a breed that they know they know they're known and all their, you know, wannabes know they're known, I don't go there. Because that's where a lot of this is originating. Respecter of persons. What is respecter of persons? It's really officially you only respect a few that you like, your kind your style, your vibe, your look, the rest you sort of are immune to, indifferent, or else you project accusation. They're suspicious unto you, and that's falsely discerning. Potentially, be careful. You may be falsely discerning the body of Christ because God is sending new people with a new move of God in your midst. This is the old move I'm talking to, a lot of it. We want you to get your ready to be in the new move, but listen, you can't rest on your 80s, 90s laurels, 70s, 60s, 2000s laurels. This is an equal opportunity move of God, and I'm here to tell it, proclaim it, and declare it. Anybody can do what they feel God wants them to do. I'm not over it. I'm like a Paul. This ministry is a one, Galatians 1, 1 and 2 office, all five offices off scouring of the world kind but Paul said he was this I am Paul not sent out by any I'm an apostle of the Lord not sent out with by any one group or any one person I and the brothers that are with me that includes mothers and sisters I and the brothers that are with me not under me I'm not under them I'm not under one group or one person that make me divisive all right I'm under the Lord I believe in character accountability if I could find chosen people that are true to do that I used to have that but I can't be dominated by false teaching or immaturity because I've been through too much to research Paul and the doctrines of today and you know basic doctrines so I take advice I take counsel but I also think because a lot of people who are I hate to say it my own race 
the white community is usually pretty gentrified and have not been through too much and they're not really diverse in the fact you've got to think not just about your your style you got to think everybody's style they may have a different opinion or call or role so when I teach Paul I say as a off-scouring apostle happy in that to the mega famous ministry I guess I just want to be me but I'm teaching it because you can teach I do have authority to teach and God has preserved me and I've grown through the many good teachings that are out there by famous and not it's just now you got these stylized cults of witch watchers are my nightmare so what I would say is that Paul if you read Paul and his teaching about offices he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament All right, he's a mentor to me and a friend when I tried DFW clickish charismatica <laughs> I don't do that I'm not gonna do that sell out so I, I mean I forgive them that isn't it I just think this is a huge culture around the world that's blocking the true genuine diverse organic move of the first church in the last days you can pick apart this doctrine you can talk to me that's fine all right so Paul says my role model I'm not sent out by any one person because he didn't want to be controlled used marketed he didn't want to embarrass people if he said something goofy like I don't but he was part of the community and he was not over people he was not their slave you better watch it you better get my permission before you turn a light bulb on in the ministry he was not a controller dominator of false doctrine instead he was a collaborator so that's my goal with the collision is to point out Ephesians excuse me community yeah Ephesians community Galatians 1 1 and 2 offices as a role model prototype for some of you in ministry and to say it's about mutual submission in the fear of the Lord Ephesians 4 everyone walking it out in meekness and loneliness hearing God but not getting to be a lone ranger Paul says when he writes Ephesians anytime he writes the word apostle about himself anytime he writes a word the five fold offices pastor prophet teacher evangelist okay he never uses a capital letter even bishop is low-key lower case to me that means servant leadership that's the only way the only rule is to be a, you know yourself in whatever style fancy or not in servant humility leadership across the body secondly Paul says I and the brothers surely their mothers in there he's not a witch watcher neither is Jesus He's not a religious potentate or a, you know, keeping you captive and have these apostles make sure they're keeping tabs if you're a fellowship hopper. And so Paul says wisely to the churches, hey, I'm on your team. I'm a collaborator. I'm not sent to be over you. I'm sent, I and the brothers that are with me. That means I'm on your team. I'm interested in collaborating in the community as God leads. And that's me. That's all this is. So the word of the Lord is true. Let it be confirmed in the mouth of two or more witnesses or three or four, 10 or 15. And then the word of the Lord is so good. It's purified like gold in the fiery furnace. God has preserved me through all sorts of mayhem and hell, blame shifting, all sorts of ego issues, all sorts of spiritual unnecessary warfare. He's kept me young because I knew the word of the Lord from my youth on. Thank God for the many movements on television, such as the principles before it got whacked out and served by some people of different ministries like Abiding Faith. I believe in certain principles and good healing teaches prevention prayer intercession my mom and sister were my mom and mother her mother were intercessors but they weren't spooky they were just low-key loving family members and that's all this has ever wanted to be however you can't help what people think and project from their own field when you go to false teaching who knows what these people have been through to develop an attitude of paranoia disrespect iconoclastic we're the world everybody should be submitted to our way without even relating and finding out you've got a call too. what is your theology that's my advice everybody lower themselves we need to lower themselves or God is gonna lower us 
God is good as mercy endures. This is Tavo DRC signing off from Mount from Tavo Creative Leadership. Bye bye. Bless you.